and uh, had him on, and we just started drinking beers. And, and so I didn't even have a title for the, the show, I don't think, at that point. And I think it was one of the listeners who said, uh, oh, Pubcast. Let's go. Hey, JR. Hey. <laughs> hey. So I don't even know how to jump into this, man. It's been a long time. So um, John Robinson, JR, we're going to call him. Mm-hmm. My backup CEO, business manager, family. Say hi, say hi, JR. Hello, world. <laughs> yeah. So we used to do this for years. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, back in the original days of the pubcast, um, I, I'd say probably three or four of the years were just pr- predominantly on business related topics that we would talk about. And since we're bringing that back today, at least, I think that we might be doing something like this going forward. I think we've got to do in a, a legit pubcast mm-hmm. where drinks are actu- actually consumed. I've kind of moved away from that over the years, but it's, t- it's time to do it. All right. Before we do that, because yeah. I, love, I love that you're resetting the table. Yeah, I like that you're resetting the table. So in the spirit of reflecting back, what was the intention of the pubcast when you first came up? Because we're probably going to have a bunch of new listeners. Yeah. And I want to just kind of get in touch with that energy again, because as we relaunch it, maybe it's similar, maybe it's different, maybe it's a little bit of both. So why the pubcast? Well, so first of all, just having a pub, a podcast generally. You got to remember, this is 2012. Mm-hmm. Um. I mainly did it because I thought that's what I was supposed to do. That was really it. Yeah. I, I don't know what more intention I had. Um, and the first iteration of it was locally hosted, meaning I recorded it, embedded it on my website, and that was it. It like didn't go to iTunes or any of that stuff. <laughs> and, and I remember it was it was a Marcus Sheridan thing. He like he wrote a blog post or something about this is how you put together a quick and dirty podcast. And that's what I did. Yeah. Um, so I eventually moved out. Now it became it initially it was just me nervously talking into the mic um, about who knows what. And then I started having guests on, which is the thing primarily I need to get back to. Uh, we could talk about that a little bit later, but um, and I think it was my first guest, Mike Meg Sudi. Um, he, he, I don't know anyone cause he's, he's back in the corporate world these days, but he was one of those super young entrepreneurs, fresh out of college. He and his buddies started a company, uh, a, an app company and it was pretty amazing and, uh, had him on and we just started drinking beers, which, <laughs> And, and so I didn't even have a title for the, the show, I don't think, at that point. And I think it was one of the listeners who said, oh, Pubcast. And that's, and that's where it went. But that format was, was perfect for me, as you know. It's like, I need something casual. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of the whole point here is like, let's talk about something that's you know business related, but let's make it as casual and conversational as possible. There's no more casual and conversational place than a pub. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And, and you're right. Cause as the time grew on, cause I thought it was around talking about Facebook strategies and things first, and then it evolved into talking about everything entrepreneurial or everything business. Yeah. 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 That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it, I thought it grew that way. And then you stepped away a little bit. Well, kind of. So it's like there was always a shift in this. This is the one of the hardest things. I think it's a, a solopreneur type person um, where you only have so much time and, and so much uh, attention that you can give. So I, use, I, I will go in phases of having a lot of attention on the podcast. When that happens, it takes my attention away from something else. Um, so basically the podcast has always been around. Um, there have been times where it's often a repurposing. So like 
I think I was using, you know, like web, repurposing webinars and stuff and putting them on the podcast or something. Uh, but I went from the long form interview style and then I actually started just doing some solo 20 to 30 minute episodes. I was doing that for a while mm -hmm. um, and then moved to the, the shots um, yeah. and then really just yeah. only shots for the, for the last year. Cause I was, you know, focused on other stuff. And shots meaning a format that's not 30 minutes. Just means uh, I'm going to take a bunch of shots uh, when I talk. And so I'm not going to really know what I'm talking about. No, it's, yeah, it's like. Although that is a good idea. That's like drunk history. So we could, we could, we could get to that. Cause that'd be kind of funny as you talking about entrepreneurship and Facebook marketing smashed. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Shot typically has been five to 10 minutes. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Although lately what I've been doing is taking, again, repurposing, taking my uh, short form videos, the ones that at least don't have any screen sharing or anything and repurposing those into super short shots, right? It's just a, a minute basically plus intro outro. Um, but yeah, the whole the, this is something actually I learned a little bit from, cause I also started doing my, my baseball podcast Mm -hmm. um and i did a lot of super short episodes there and i got really comfortable with it um and honestly as a consumer i think those are pretty valuable too so i think there's a place for these short episodes yeah i like that so you, you did a good job setting the table but or, but the okay. table the next thing on the table has to be the drink yeah. though yeah okay hold on this is a pubcast so what are you drinking jr i am drinking a coronado brewing company California hard cider. That's hard what I want. Cider. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a hard cider? I have. I have. Like, yeah. All I've yeah. got today is a Colorado native West Slope IPA. Uh, I don't have a whole lot in the fridge right now. Whoa! Oh, did you see that save? It was going all over, and then oh, I spilled a little bit. Lisa would have killed you. Nah. So there we go. I'm pouring my hard cider. Was I shaking this up? Man, oh, man. <laughs> well, I'm not saying cheers for a while. I, get this. I, I spilled a little bit. Not much. <laughs> Wasn't too bad. That, that was about to be a disaster, though. <laughs> glug, glug, glug. <laughs> that was good. So we'll, we'll, let, we'll let yours settle, settle for a bit. So yeah. while, yours is, while yours is settling... I want you to settle into what the next version. So we had Pubcast 1.0, which is everything before this episode. And now we're going to have 2.0. Like what is, what is 2.0 looking like? Well, so here's a deal. I, what's, there's a lot I feel like we could talk about, but um, I never did finish that buttoning, did I? <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> um, so there's a lot that I feel like I need to change and looking when I was kind of evaluating, okay, what needs to change? What do I need to do? I've looked back at things I used to do that I don't do anymore. First of all, to decide was there value in that, that I lost since I'm not doing that anymore. And I think with podcasts, that's absolutely the case, um, especially with having guests, right? So having a guest on, um, not only have conversational style, have a back and forth that can be pretty valuable and have a beer and all that stuff. It's, it's a little depressing when it's just me having a beer by myself, talking to myself. Um, but also something I wasn't doing was getting on other people's show. And that's been an emphasis of mine. I've been on, I think, 18 shows over the last month that we've uh, recorded for lots of reasons it's important i mean telling your story is good but making friends <laughs> is something i got away from truthfully like my relationships um and then reaching other people's audiences is good too when you can so this, yeah. this is all kind of a marketing approach that i abandoned honestly because i took it all for granted i get to be honest so, so as far as what we do next yeah i mean that's kind of the thought is my plan right now is to have, um, if we do ours, you know, uh, once a month, maybe, 
or twice a month, whatever you want to do. And I have a, another guest once or twice a month, and then I continue with the shots. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of, and I'm also at the same time being a guest on other people's show. That's kind of uh, my plan for the year. Yeah, and, and I want to kind of double back a little bit because your approach to podcasting, your approach to podcasts in general, you just described the shift. Like you're going to be more involved with being on other people's shows. You're going to be more involved and committed to publishing more. And then you're going to be more involved with adding guests to the the pod, pubcast podcast. So there's a part of me that thinks about why did I stop doing that? I know that a lot of entrepreneurs, what got them to where they are, there's this myth that it won't get them to where they're going. So sometimes they stop and you stopped because like you said, you only have so much attention right? I'm, and, and then a lot of attention in 2022 has been baseball. Oh yeah. And, 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 and baseball has been part of the Loomer household what 13 it was years? 16 well 16 years i was coaching okay 16 i thought 13 okay so 16 years of life and then the the entrepreneurship journey is 12, 11 12 11 years. This, this is some interesting math that i was just doing today um i have now spent as much time working for myself as i worked in an office yes perfect so there, there was some time where i worked for someone else from home but yeah yeah. So, so the point I'm bringing up is that there's, there are moments when you reflect back on what worked and then you, you stop doing that yep. and then realized the value that's not there anymore because you stopped. So there's a part of this, this podcast podcast journey is, is re enrolling yourself and re-engaging yourself. And I'm saying all this for the, those listeners to not be so hard on themselves on going back to something that worked and, and re-engaging with it because some people might just say that didn't work then and it's not going to work going forward or it did, but that was a different time. And right. there's a possibility it could work again. Yeah. There was a lot of stuff at play here. I mean, first of all, I think the fact that I didn't really know why I was doing it mm -hmm. uh, contributed to why I wasn't able to keep it, going consistently um it's also hard to measure mm -hmm. so it's really tough to measure the impact of a podcast and i also took for granted how like i still remember seeing my numbers and being like that's overblown because i've got an embedded player on my website and i get like four hundred thousand page views a month on my website so people are just clicking it and playing it and they're not listening to much yeah. And because of that, I took the player off my site. It's like little stuff like that. Like, what was I thinking? Right. Yeah. Um, but I've had, like, I saw the numbers the other day and I did a little video on this. It's, it's over 1.3 million downloads of the pubcast. Wow. T totally took it for granted. I've taken yeah. it for granted. Um, yeah. And that, but again, I think it's because other than the downloads, I don't have much measurement. And it's also because I didn't really know why I was doing it in the first place. But now realizing that, yes, that was contributing uh, probably more than I knew. So you lead, you're leading me into a, a good place because you, when you describe setting, what are you doing? You're, you're in cheers? Well, uh, you're, you're talking. Wow. You're talking. It's been sitting here waiting. You're terrible. Can it be cheers? Jeez, hey, I, that's I, I haven't been out of the house in 11 years. I don't know how to how to have friends and do stuff yeah, right, cheers in my stomach. <laughs> cheers cheers oh my god spilled all over me okay so reeling myself back in when you first started talking about setting the table about why the podcast exists in the beginning you did kind of not really have a very very clear direction or reason why 2.0 of a podcast what's the why now for 2023 I mean, I think it's a lot of the same reasons um, as I'm going into video. Mm -hmm. It's it's making this personal connection that you can't make with the written word. 
it's reaching people in the places that they consume content. So if they don't like reading content, if they don't even like watching videos, maybe, and they like podcasts, that's one more, one more way to reach them. I also think that this angle is something I don't, I can't really address a lot of a lot of times on my website, um, you know, talk, doing entrepreneurship type stuff. Right. So, um, I think that's, that's the main why, but I, well, I that's can't great. remember. What's no, that? No, no, that, that, that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal yeah. as, as a source, because as listeners, if you don't understand the source, the energy that you want to put into the world or get from it, it's really hard to commit to it. And you surprised me a little bit. And it's funny because I talk to you almost every day for the last 11 years, every business day for the last 11 years. Um, so for me to say something surprising, this means, wow, I have never heard you say this, which is this idea of, well, I want to meet people where they are. And I remember, and maybe I'm wrong with this, I remember that there was times where you're like, well, that's just not our customer. If they don't, if they don't consume it here, then that's just not our customer. And maybe I'm a little off with that, but I kind of feel like that was one of the ways when we started losing members or this that, and the other. It's like, well, you know what? I, we don't do transcripts. We right. have people want us to do transcripts, or and that's a bad example, but but my point along the way of what I'm trying to make is sometimes we have constraining beliefs that we change because it sounds like you're more now of, okay, I'm going to meet them where they're at. And I'll give you another example, which I used to pressure you a lot around how do we serve other countries by switching the times that we do things like the one-on-ones or the, or whatever it is. And I find you doing that now of, hey, I'm going to meet them where they're at. Even though I think you just said you had a one-on-one -on -one that was three in the morning for, for, for them. Yeah. Yeah. So they're still going to meet you yeah. where you are. But I think there's a, a really cool shift of you meeting them where they're at or even a balance. They meet you where you are and you meet them where they are versus they just got to meet yeah. me where I am and. And that's okay. Yeah, there's a lot of layers to this. I mean, first of all, yeah, I think I was in a very good place where I could pick and choose where I, where I went, the method of doing things, whatever, because things were really good. I can kind of make the rules. Um, also, you know, I, I feel like I'm looking for the, the the right word for this. My my three year English major uh, is been been the alcohol all, all is it. getting to you. <laughs> no, it, but it's these days people are spread out. I think yes. more than ever before. So like originally when I was all in on my blog, and Google was sending me a ton of traffic, and just generally, it that that's pretty normal way to consume content for a marketer was via a blog. Um, it made sense. Like, no, I'm not going to spread myself out too thin and do a whole bunch of videos and, you know, create all this different type of format, all, whatever, um, you go on all these other platforms. I don't feel comfortable with like my wet, my website, my blog, my email list, Facebook, those are working for me. I don't need to do anything else. And I didn't honestly at the time. And now it's a matter of, um, first of all, everybody spread out, um, but also I need to I need to reach them. <laughs> I mean, as I've found, there are people who want to consume my stuff. They just want to consume it in a different way, and I am now reaching them. Um, and I felt like I abandoned them for a few years. There. Bottoms up. I want to I want to touch on that a little bit because there's an energy of desperation. And, and you didn't say this, so this is just me kind of reflecting. It probably back. is. Yeah, probably okay. Is. All right. Perfect. Perfect. So, so, so there's an energy of desperation, which, which has put you in the position to try new things, to let go of some of the beliefs that you had and change some of the rules that you have for yourself, because I will put this out here. And I've told you this before, this entire John Limmer team begged John to do videos for a long time and 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 you were were just 
not you didn't know what to say you didn't know what to do you don't feel comfortable in front of a camera right. and you gave so much resistance to it until you got into a state of despair and now you look comfortable like i'm watching some of these videos i can't help not watch them because the algorithm won't stop putting it uh, on my face awesome. so I'm, i gotta figure out how to tune you out but yeah. but every time i i i open TikTok or instagram i've got my cousin in my face which okay but you look comfortable so how did you how did you get comfortable with something that you had so much resistance to well again i think it's important it's not just that i resisted it and i was stubborn and i'm sure i was stubborn that's part of it it's just a matter of time as well yeah like, that's i agree with that so I, 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 i'm gonna cut you off on this because w the way that you approach time and your effort into that is different so for me i see oh just do a TikTok and recording is four minutes and just do that every day and it's a top of seven minutes in your day and and that's it that's not you you're a you are violently obsessive backstage behind the curtain people don't know that a two minute i don't even know what what's the number is it a minute oh, they're, and a half? they're they're minute long videos so, so minute long okay. videos you probably put in a hundred maybe a hundred minutes of that one minute i don't know how, uh, how, how, much, so how much that's something i'm working on um, but, but, but what has it been though it's been it's it started at two hours per video which See? For one Keep in minute. mind, when I, when I was doing three three videos a day and it was taking two hours per video, six hours a day, that, that was a lot. It's now, I, I mean, I'm not timing it, but it's generally, it's got to be about an hour now right. per, per so, minute but, video. But, yeah. but again, look at that. When, when a lot of people think about, okay, can I commit to this? And then you've got a team that's like, John, you, you don't want to do videos and you press it. And then it's like, well, we don't understand that your method is two hours for one minute. And I've seen a lot of videos on TikTok. No way that those people are putting two hours into. Some people are. Uh, no, no, I, I, no, no, I agree. There are some people are, but they are the exceptions. The majority of a lot of that stuff is, is just thrown out there. So you take it yeah. seriously. So I guess that's what my major point is, is to take this seriously. It's going to take time, more time than most people would think. Well, and I think, you know, that to get from point A to point B, like creating two hour videos that take you two hours to getting more efficient takes a whole lot of reps, right? It's just like lifting weights. Like you're not going to go straight to, you know, you, what are you at now? Benching 90 pounds or so. I have no idea anymore. <laughs> no, but you're not going to, you're, you're going to throw with the bar. You're struggling with the bar still. Exactly. You're going to throw two plates on there right away. Wow. You know, like you've got to um, work your way up to it and it takes reps to get there. So like, that's why like I had to push through it, even though it would took so long. I was creating three, three videos a day most days because otherwise if I did one, like every few days and it took two hours, like how long would it have taken me to get more efficient then? Cause you still need the same number of videos to figure out a good, um, process and, and 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 to get that efficiency so part of it for me is just velocity like you know a lot of trial and error and a lot of experimentation to get there so so you you bring up a good point of learning curve so for you what is your relationship to learning curves because you didn't have much experience with this right oh zero right i had no idea what i was doing when i got into it Right. So, so there are some people like me still don't know how to swim well, and I'm 52. The learning curve to me of learning how to swim is not appealing. And then I took a, you know, a, a, a two hour coaching session and now I know exactly what commitment is to getting better at swimming, but I had no idea. So I look at you and, and as you try new things, do you find yourself, if you don't know it at all, does it turn you off or turn you on? Yeah, it's, I'm still turned off by something I don't know how to do. It's, yeah. it's, real, it's, it's a huge obstacle 
Um, I don't like creating bad stuff. Um, and that's what really held me back from video more than anything is like you set a standard because I, I feel so confident in blogging and to the point where, you know, I can I write what I think is a good blog post in, in under an hour um, where I know that's hard for a lot of people. You, you throw me the TikTok app and say, hey, create a good video. And I'm like, I'll instead of trying, I'll say no, because I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm going to embarrass myself. Is that your ego? Is that your ego getting in the way of yeah. looking silly? Because right. I thought your first TikTok video, wasn't that supposed to be your worst one? I right, right. No, and that's kind of my point. So it wasn't until I got to that point of accepting the only way I'm going to be able to do this is to create some bad videos. The only way I'm going to be able to create some good ones is to create some bad ones first that I can learn from and get that experience. But you have to come to that acceptance first, and that's not an easy thing to do. Cheers. I just realized something. Are you going to use any of this video content for TikToks? I just... I just thought I should have made it more different t-shirt. Are you using some of this for TikTok? Uh, it's probably, it could go to YouTube potentially. I'm going to, I'm actually, I've got my camera, my phone up. It's taking me. That's a little something I learned from uh, Stephen Pope. Uh, so that might, I might take some snippets for TikTok from there. I don't know if I'll take our whole show for, for TikTok. I'm going to wear nicer clothes next time then. What's, what's wrong with your shirt? <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, for those that are just listening, the shirt that I have on says, just put this in your pocket. And it's one of my buddies had given me this T-shirt for, I think, my birthday based on a conversation that I had with him on me being in San Diego. And whenever I approach someone who's homeless and if they ask or don't ask, I will give them not every every person I run into, but the, when I decide to do it, I just say, hey, put this in your pocket. Like literally, I just hand them if it's a dollar, if it's change or whatever. So I and then I, I sourced that by my Aunt Lois, which, you know, Aunt Lois, mm -hmm. which she used to say, hey, put this in your pocket before I would go golfing or leave the house. So it'd be just that little that little change out of her coin purse <laughs> or <laughs> money out of her coin purse so that that's the significance of the t-shirt of just as put this in your pocket oh that's good context otherwise yeah i had no idea what that meant <laughs> you're just gonna tease me like oh yeah. what a dumb t-shirt now yeah. now you now you I won't say that Cheers. right so so there's a part of um we talked about attention we talked about change and learning curves I love the what was I thinking? Uh, I love the the why did I stop doing that? There's that last part of like, okay, how have you kept yourself motivated and encouraged when you already described that you're in a little bit of state of despair, meaning that you're 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 chasing that despair. How are you how are you staying uplifted during this little this little season of despair, I'll call it. Yeah, it's pretty up and down right now. I think um, what really helps, <clears throat> and this is, you know, human nature, but I wish it wasn't this way. Like getting that feedback that you, you know, get in the comments, getting people to say, oh, good stuff, whatever, really helps. Because otherwise you're just publishing into the void and it's nothing. But the other thing is like the number of people who told me that they like booked a one on one or signed up for PHC or whatever because of the videos keeps me motivated. Because um, otherwise, you know, I know there's going to come a point like I can't keep this philosophy going where it, also like ideas. I'm going to run out of ideas like it's going to become harder and harder. What's going to happen at that point? I don't know. Um, but it's so I just want to stay as motivated as, I, motivated as I can be for as long as I can right now. When you say that, there's there's something that shows up for me as I shake my shoulders through the uncomfortableness of asking you this, and it's your relationship with feedback. Mm -hmm. Again, my memory, and I've been 
challenging you, coaching you, supporting you, cheerleading you for 12 plus years and, and even before the business. Because when you're at the NBA, I was like, my family's in the NBA now. So I don't know if you remember that, but I was, and then, yeah. So I used to brag on you. I don't brag on you anymore. But, yeah. um, but there's a part of, of what has happened to your relationship with feedback. And I'll set the table with, or the context. You used to be super sensitive to reading feedback that was unfavorable. And it puts you in a, a funk. And it sounds like now you are more secure with feedback versus being anxious. Is that true? No. Okay. <laughs> I okay. don't think so. I mean, so, so you're so still for, sensitive to bad feedback. Well, I mean, first of all, the, the positive feedback definitely motivates me. Um, right. the negative, um, I'll, I, as soon as I see it's negative, I often just try to ignore it and like, don't even finish it. Um, but you didn't used to be that way. I don't think. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to say I do it successfully. Uh, right. Okay. Cause, cause that's what I remember that yeah. it used to bother you. It used to bug you. And I remember back in the days when you used to get into loops of responding to stuff. Yeah. And then, then you'd be really mad. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's one thing I don't do is uh, engage. Well, you know, depending on how constructive that construct that uh feedback was or destructive right i mean if it's trolls like i happily ban people and delete their comments and stuff <laughs> and sometimes i'll troll them back right like there there was someone who uh said something about how you know i don't know how he hates my ads or whatever and he responds to, he's gonna respond to all of my ads with with memes and then i respond to his with to his post with a meme i can't even remember what it was it was it was one of those like oh cool cool i can't even remember what it was but uh so yeah look um I, I, it still impacts me uh it's still tough but i think i handle it a little bit better mm -hmm. um i think it's just human nature it's tough. I, I'll, I'll i'll still say that you know it's that one negative out of you know 10 that will I think about the most. So. Yeah, and, and I, 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 I bring this up because you tied your enjoyment or you tied, tied what you're motivated and encouraged by to the feedback, to the pro progress. When we first started the podcast, you couldn't really trust the numbers. You couldn't yeah. really look at the numbers and be like, oh, this is a reason for us to keep doing it. And, and now it sounds like, like even, even page views, do you, do you look at page views the same as you used to a long time ago? Not the way I used to. And, but right. there's a lot of stuff I don't pay as much attention to these days because it's kind of depressing. Right. Like, so that's, wait, wait, so there's, that's my point about yeah. feedback. So what yeah. you're choosing to be encouraged by or not. So, so what are the depressing ones? Well, and to be honest, it's like if I tell other people like what my traffic was, they'd say, quit feeling sorry for yourself because it's <laughs> I'm still getting, you know, 80,000, 100,000 pages That's a crazy. month, whatever. <laughs> but the problem is like I, I could work my butt off trying to improve that. And that's the frustrating part. I'm like, I just I can't really make a huge dent. Like I can get it going up a little bit. But when I was getting 400 to I think 600,000 is what I was capping out at per month. Um, that's, that's the hard part, but I think the toughest part for me now, honestly, is like, I can get all the positive feedback in the world, but if the cash register is not going ka-ching, I'm like, yeah. so where's that? What am I doing wrong? You know? Yeah. That, that's, that's the part. Cheers. Right so I'm curious about this and I'm going to tap into your old baseball days, which is four months ago or whatever. When I think about someone that is trying to increase their batting average and all the work that they have, and I don't know, I don't know baseball enough to, to say from here to here, but, you know, say from 200 to 250 or whatever, <clears throat> all the work that goes into that, and then they don't see 
yeah. the results of them getting better, but all this work that goes into it, how, how do you handle that? It's a lot like that, right? So, you know, coaching young kids and like they can get down the dumps if they're having a bad tournament or a bad week or whatever, but they're maybe they're doing everything right. It's just not leading to great results or, yeah. or over time they've improved their batting average or, or something so incrementally that they don't really notice it's happening. Um, and they may, you know, not take pride in that. The way they, it's business is the same way. It's like you want to see those big numbers jump out at you to say, this is why you've been putting in all that work. But it's not always that obvious. You've got to track it over time, compare point A to co point B. It might be over a year or over two years. And be like, oh, wow, that's right. I forgot it was like that. You know? And that, that's. That's the difficult part of being at this stage uh, in the business is like we already had the highs. Mm -hmm. So so what am I comparing to? You know, now it's it's more of a matter of, OK, at the at the lowest of lows, um, you know, what, what what's the progress we're making? So this this feels like a, a coaching moment. And this is kind of what we do all the time. And what shows up for me is the conversation in my head of gap and gain. And when I think about gap, it's ideal. It's where am I at right now to the ideal. And you just described our ideal was, you know, thousands of members and this, that, and the other. And that's not what it is. So that's, if we're focused upon that comparing to ideal, we're gonna be disappointed every day. But if we focus on the game of, all right, where were we at a month ago? And where are we at today? That has more positive energy. Because I'll tell you, as I mentioned earlier about taking a swimming lesson, before I got in the pool, I was deathly afraid. And I had this Olympic coach, Olympic trainer. And two hours later, if I focused on the ideal, meaning, oh, I can swim now, or focus on, well, I'm not afraid in the water anymore. Oh, I can float. Like, I didn't know I could float. Like, literally, yeah. I, what you're laughing, I had no, no, I did not, I did not think I could float. And then me naturally being able to float with no fear, that was a win. But I didn't even know getting in the water what my win was, other than, all right, I'm going to be swimming after two hours. That, that was crazy for me to think that. And, and I haven't had a lesson since. And I think it was probably because until I'm realizing right now that I was still thinking I was the job that I wanted the coach to do was to get me to start swimming when really the job was get me comfortable and not afraid in the water. So I think as you just mentioned that it was like, hey, it is about truly focusing on the little bit of progress versus yeah. what you would want ideally. Okay. Part of what people have to understand is like sometimes it's not about growth it's about slowing the bleeding mm, that's right? fair so an example would be like let's continue your analogy but in a really bad way let's say you were originally you originally learned how to swim really fast and you became an olympic swimmer and then all of a sudden you forgot how to swim oh right so all of, all of a sudden you forgot how to swim so if they threw, threw in your water you drown yeah. You're not going to drown now. You can float. Yeah. So that, that's kind of what I feel feel like right now. It's like I'm not drowning. Like I've learned how to float, uh, and to, to get myself back to that point. So, you know, it's just a matter of uh, continuing to doggy paddle for now. Cheers. And and, and I, I like that you bring that up because I remember that we had dreams of helping more solopreneurs. That we wanted to create a community very similar to Power Hitters Club about about getting solopreneurs and entrepreneurs into a community so that it could uplift each other. So they, they could share tools, tips and techniques with each other so they could, in essence, elevate together. And you mentioned stop the bleeding. And I think I remember saying, hey, we should start the solopreneur thing again. And then you have this energy of like, dude, I got to stop the bleeding over here before we can 
create anything else. Right. And then I missed it then, and I'm not missing it now, but I'm not putting my finger well on it. I think there's a community of entrepreneurs out there that just want to stop the bleeding and just need a little bit support to float again versus the, and you hate that. Right? I think you, you might not hate it as much, but the word scale, like you used to hate that word of scaling that everything had to be about exponential growth and 10 X right. and now that's, that's never been my goal. That's I, never I been. Yeah. And, and, and that's not how you operate at all in just life. Like, even for your running, like how many miles did you just finish? Didn't you just finish your yearly goal yesterday? Thousand, yeah, thousand miles. Yep. Yeah, you act like that's nothing. So your goal was a thousand miles this year. What was last year's goal? Nine hundred. I go up a hundred every year. Perfect. That's not exponential growth, but that is growth. So next year is eleven. That's the plan. Eventually, I'll, I won't be able to do it anymore. So we'll see. So, but but even even for listeners. Listen, that sounds like you're being realistic. Mm. And I think part of this whole marketing engine about growth and exponential this and exponential that, it's all sexy until it doesn't happen. You know, and I think like for you, you've done a good job of, and I'm going to say baby steps because I don't know, 100, 10%, 10% each year. So that's what you're doing. 100 miles on the thousand so 10 percent, right so 10 percent. so what if everybody was thinking okay i want to grow my business by 10 percent? in essence when everyone's selling 10 times that amount versus 10 percent. so so there's really something to how you set achievable goals and do you feel like as you're going through this state of a little bit of despair and stopping the bleeding that stopping the bleeding isn't is enough of a goal I mean, stopping the bleeding is growth too, right? <clears throat> because so it's it's a matter of. That's a great tagline for a blog, just so you know. Stopping the bleeding is growth too, because it's a matter of B minus A, right? So if it otherwise would have been more negative than than it would have been if I hadn't done this, that is growth. Yeah. So there is positive there, but it's it's difficult to see that in the moment. And like when the numbers come out and you're like, oh, it's either, you know, same as last month. Uh, like, well, yeah, but it would have been <laughs> X if, if we kept going on the path we were. Tell, tell me about B versus B minus A. I've never heard that before. Oh, I just came out of my mouth. That was just basically math, right? So, um, you know, what was it last month? What, you know, what is it this right. month? And yeah, that, that's where we are. You know, so so math wise, it doesn't look like it's a big deal, but where could right. it have been, basically? Yeah. Dude, I I love that. I love that because I think there isn't having a break even month is not celebrated in many places. It just isn't. Or having the same month as a month before isn't celebrated. And over the last two years with COVID and business performance in general, it's more a win now yeah. to have month over month consistency than it was at any other time because because it's volatile right now it's going to continue to be volatile in small business medium-sized business and large business yeah i mean there was a time where i could just coast not do anything different and we get we get, we get growth you know get great results whatever yeah and now I, you know i realize i've got a bust my butt, try new things, do, th do stuff I've never done before to maintain. And, but realizing if I didn't do that, I mean, I might be nearing the end. Who knows? Yeah, I get that. I Are we finishing that beer? All right. We're All gonna right. finish it. And you're gonna get the check, right? Yeah, you got it. Here we go. It's official. All right. Did you finish it? It's all gone? All gone. That's the okay. sound of an empty can. Maybe next time we do two. All right. All right. So, uh, yeah, thanks for joining me again, JR. First time in a long time. Yeah. But tell people how you can help them because help them the way you've helped me over the years. Oh, man. I wake up each day wanting to help entrepreneurs that are trying to make the experiences better, 
trying to make more of an impact in the world. So I love coaching and challenging and guiding. And if you're just starting, I volunteer my time too. And if you're just trying to get to the next level of business, I charge with fair. So you can reach me at Backup CEO anywhere on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you name it. So Backup CEO. Or John, J-O-H-N at Backup CEO. Yes, <laughs> that's it too. <laughs> he spells it wrong. No, you All right. So it. how often are we going to do this? I'd love to do it every other week at a minimum. That because because I still I'm going to put it out there intentionally. I would love for this podcast, this moment of talking about small business and entrepreneurship and just personal leadership. I so want to create another community. I really do. At some point is I, I, I really want us to create a community for those that attach to this content and want to surround themselves with other people who care about, you know, just enjoying entrepreneurship. And, and those two words didn't come easily off of my tongue because there's not a lot of people talking about enjoying entrepreneurship. They talk about the struggles of it. And I think you can get to the state of enjoying entrepreneurship. Sounds good. Yeah, I think this is a, a good outlet. Um, I know, look, I, I received an email from somebody today uh, saying that they needed, that's one of the things they're looking for is more help with, more help, more support, whatever, um, as they start a business. And while I don't think I can really do that uh, as a product right now, I think this is a good way to do it. So keep listening, y'all. All right, thanks, JR. I, I'm gonna like I have to completely re envision how we're doing the pubcast, the closing, the opening, and everything. We'll, we'll see how it would go, but uh, I guess I wrap it up as we always did. And until next time, do awesome things. I'm out.